Math 31, I had a question coming out of section 2.6, number 25. And here we were given a radical equation. And I'm dealing with a square root here. That's the index on that radical. So what I really want to do is I want to square both sides. So that's what you see me doing in this problem, or this step, excuse me. I'm squaring both sides of the equation. So on the left side, the square root and the square cancel out. That gets me just 12 minus x. And then over here on the right side, I get x squared. And now I, I see that I've got my quadratic term. So I've got a quadratic equation right there with x squared plus x minus 12 if I move everything to one side. And keep in mind that whenever it comes to a quadratic equation, you've got three methods, right? You can factor, you can use the quadratic formula, or you can complete the square. Now the last two, these will always work. They'll always get you a solution. All right, so that's why they're they're nice. Now, I personally, I try and factor if I can, just keeping in mind that not every polynomial is factorable. And if it's not, right, or I'll, I'll even be more specific, not every quadratic can be factored. And if it can't, then I'll go to the quadratic formula. But I do like factoring, so that's usually where I start it. Now, I opted to go ahead and um, split the middle term. Ooh, I must have hit the eraser there. I split the middle term coming off of this. That's a factoring method that's possible. Um, if you like splitting the middle term, great. If you don't, if you're like, man, I was just gonna guess and check, that's fine. You need to come to a point where you see that this quadratic can be factored into x minus three or x plus three. And now we've got two terms, x minus three and x plus four. Oh, I think I just said x minus three, x plus three. My bad. Let me start this, this little spiel over. Once you factor this thing, you're gonna see that it breaks into x minus three, x plus four. And now with the zero product property, because I have two terms, one here and one here that multiply to zero, either x minus three was zero or x plus four is zero. So at this point, I think that my solutions, my possible solutions are three and negative four. But you always wanna substitute your solutions back into the original equation up here to see if equality holds. Because when you're dealing with radicals, there's extraneous solutions floating around. And for this problem, one of them won't work. So let's try three, right? If I wanna check three here, oops. It, you'll see me, oh, I can't use my words today. You're, you're going to see me plugging 3 in, right? So I have the square root of 12 minus 3. Is that equal to 3? Well, 12 minus 3 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. That checks out, so I'm going to keep that. All right, but now let's try 4. Excuse me, negative 4. So I'm going to plug that in, right? So you see me plugging in negative 4 here. And if I was going to work through this, this is going to be the square root of 12 plus 4 is that equal to negative 4, right? Well, is the square root of 16 equal to negative 4? And that's just not true. 4 is not equal to negative 4, right? That's why this solution, x equals negative 4, it doesn't make it into my final solution because it's extraneous. Yes, it algebraically popped up, but it doesn't hold. It doesn't fit with the original equation, so I need to throw it out. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.